It's me, Mikey Pipes. And me. And Air Force Nun. We're in Great Neck. Great Neck, New York. The North Shore, Nassau County, Long Island. And I was going to give the call to somebody else, one of the other guys, but there was a note on the service call, on the service uh, order. And I can't even, I'm not even going to attempt to chop up this guy's name, but his last name is XU. XU? XU. Zoo? Zoo. Sounds about right. And he has a steam boiler issue, and he only wants Mikey Pipes. So let's go give him the Mikey Pipes welcome. Are you ready, guys? Let's get right. going. Good? He's got steam boiler issues. Hi. How are you? You're very welcome. Side door? Yeah, Okay. Side door. Go to the side door like it's the service, it's the, uh, the, the, uh, the servant's entrance, right? Yeah. How are you, sir? It's me, yeah. Mikey Pipes. Yeah. How are you? How do you pronounce your last name? Oh, uh, uh, shoo, shoo. Oh, okay. XU. I'll just call you XU. How about that? Yeah, call me. It's hard. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Let me guess. The boiler's behind that door right there. Yeah. Right? Steam boiler. It's probably Penco I, or a Burnham. Yeah, Burnham. Bur all yeah. right. Tell me what's going on with it. It's a... Uh, Mixed banging sounds all over the place? It's a lot of water's, bang. Water's coming out of air vents? Yeah. The problem Show me is, which air vents. Where's the, where's the water coming out? Which air vents? It's uh, everywhere. So, <laughs> everywhere. No, the problem is uh, this boiler, we modified it, right? So the, the plumber... What do you mean you modified it? He put this like a water, hot water zone to heat that uh, two additional story on the back. And two I additional story on the back? Yeah, I don't know if this one is... Uh, oh, you... He Okay. So they you heat, added you yeah add what, added hydronic heating yeah. off the steam boiler yeah for the first and second floor yeah two not the basement not the basement first and second floor so you're above the height of the boiler yes and I didn't even see what they put in here yet but let's go through yeah it's a pretty I think it's a very simple stuff but the oh part. they used what did they use here what the let's see what model this is. That's I had four. Yeah. So, okay. So the two addition is pretty small. It's like only 500 square feet total. But the problem is each time this one is turned on, I think this boiler is like getting flushed. The side glass all empties out. It's a lot of empty out. That's the water, it's water level. How long ago was, how long was this done? I think only one year. So at the all I already replaced one of these circulators. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So when this was done, then you had problems. Yeah. So. You well, you got problems. I got solutions. Yeah. So how much money you got? <laughs> not too many. That's what I'm thinking. So because. Why I, don't you you, chat, you should you should tell, you should call him up and have him give you money back. Yeah. The problem is. Uh, the problem is is that what he's trying. I don't even know how he did it. By the way. I don't know because there's no tappings there. You must have tapped the side of the boiler. Yeah. To to make that happen. Yeah, that's there. true. I I I just don't know like what's the correct way to do it. I know like. I All right. So the correct way of doing what you wanted to do yeah. is that when you're when you're adding when you're above the elevation of the boiler. Yeah. We need to add a brace plate heat exchanger. Oh, right? Okay. And that separates the boiler water uh -huh. from the hydronic water. Yeah. And that way, you will never have the, the two won't mix. Yeah. What happens is when you go up, yeah. and you could try doing it with, with flow checks like they added there. But time how that water is filthy. Oh my god. Yeah, I already cleaned the air. How often? Uh, Once this, a year? Yeah, no, this. Uh, wow. This, this year, I already done like a. Uh, you gotta do it monthly. But the how to, I mean, right now, I'm very worried about this. You see this like a. Is connecting to the hot water. Yes, it's connecting and to the hot water. Perfect. We need hot water for the boiler. But the problem is, each time, sometimes when I try to fill this zone. No, no, stop. you can't fill the zone. All right, I have to give you some more instructions. That's the solution. You have the gas here. You have three quarter inch gas here. You have probably five thousand dollars to make what you have existing work. I get you a small little baby boiler, cast iron. So, Whale McLean. What do you want to do? So this is uh, one of the setup from the website. That's, I think, 
Yes. But it's the same. Okay. I mean, is it possible like I just uh, share? You have, you, you have everything in place already. You have flow yeah. controls, yeah. right? Everything is already there. But I didn't see like a, any flow control. But you have two on both sides. You have one right here, and you have one right there. Okay. You have two flow checks already. But the thing, why? Is it's not. Have... It's because you're not really taking from the bottom of the boiler. You're taking from like almost halfway up the side of the boiler. So then is the possible you can help me just move this one to the bottom? With no guarantee? Absolutely. Yeah. So No guarantee. So how much is that real cost? If you can... If I move, circulate it to... Move this, move that to there yeah. and that to there? Yeah. I don't know. Thousand bucks? Or something? Yeah, I think about 12, 1500 bucks. Okay, so it's a sim similar thing. Similar yeah. Okay, so it's a similar thing. Again, you're trying, you're trying to save money. Don't be a penny wise and dollar foolish. I know, I know. So right? I, I just uh, try to com compare yeah. right now because you know I hate this stuff because it's like uh, each time I have to like uh, drink like a ten, yes. ten bucket of water outside. Yes. So, so stop, that's you know doing the same thing over and over again is a definition of insanity, <laughs> right? And you're doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, listen, so there's two. There's only two real. Listen, if you want, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. But if you want me to. Give me twelve, fifteen hundred bucks, and there's no guarantee on it's, it's going to work. Rely, it's going to be reliable. But I will use. Uh, I have to, you know, take from the, le the left side of the boiler, uh -huh. make that a supplier return for the zone that goes upstairs, uh -huh. and I got to move the return to the other other opposite side of the boiler, right in the bottom, uh -huh. right as a return. Uh -huh. And I'm mean, again, I'm utilizing most of what you already have, uh -huh. flow checks included, uh -huh. and the circulator, and it'll be from the bottom of the boiler. But unless you have that heat exchanger, and got, listen, those flow checks fail, it's going to flood the boiler. Or it's going to suck all the water out, uh -huh. triggering the low, water, uh, the low water cutoff, triggering the automatic feeder, and now you're taking out buckets and buckets of water. Uh -huh. Like you're like an uneducated guy who doesn't know how to turn the boiler on and off with open the valve. And we see that a lot. So People they, flood their boilers out all the time, and then... I think it, right now it's a flood of this boiler anyway, so because I don't know like what's... The, I mean, what's the correct way to like a purge this at this moment? So there's no easy way of doing it right now. So I'm try, listen, I, I listen. I want to do what's best for you, and I'll do whatever you like. But yeah. what's best for you is it's most cost effective. Uh -huh. Separated from steam. Okay. That's oh. the most cost effective machine because when only that hydronic zone needs to turn on, uh -huh. and I haven't even measured anything yet, so I don't even know how many BTUs you need over there or nothing, but uh -huh. you, you, how, many, how many feet of baseboard do you have? Uh -huh. Maybe 30 feet at that? Yeah, around the 30 feet. All right, 30 feet. We do the math. Maybe you have, I'm just throwing a number out there because I'm probably far from wrong. Let's say you have 8,000 BTUs, uh -huh. which is really nothing. Uh -huh. We should probably do the math. Go Do a slant fin number 30 BTU calculator on your, on your phone. Five hundred eighty BTUs at one hundred eighty degrees times thirty feet is seventeen thousand and change BTUs. So if I can get you a and the and I'll keep it real, whatever we put in is going to short cycle. And what that means is that it's going to run, get the temperature real fast, and then turn off. And it's going to you. And luckily, you have three quarter inch piping. I see these these shacks like in Far Rockaway, these these bungalows where it's half inch pecs, uh -huh, and they're yeah. wondering why it's so cold in the house and the boiler's running. It's because the restriction is the pecs. Uh -huh. Here these have three quarter, uh -huh. so you need like the smallest boiler they make, and maybe it's like a CGA two. I don't even know if they make that. Let's test to make sure the pressure control is clear. Would you, would you blow, want to blow on that? Yeah, sure, blow on it. Did blow through? Yeah, sure. Yeah, would okay. you like to do it? No. That's not that. <laughs> Put the pressure tool back on. We need a little Teflon tape there, though. And then hook up the wires. All right, a few times with the Blue Monster. Put the pressure tool back on. What is this at two, by the way? We're at two and 0.5. A little under 2.5. Okay, let's look at the relief valve. Make sure that's correct. Fifteen psi. You type up or use this kind of water, so this is the same thing as uh, what you mentioned, like uh, this kind of way. You could you can get a steam boiler with a tankless coil. Yeah. Yes. But this one, you you want to take a chance with a seven year old boiler, 
and like like this idiot did, <laughs> and 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 add a tankless coil to it. Yeah. Um, so even if it has the tappings for it, I don't know anyone in their right mind, any professional, uh -huh. who's going to attempt to add a tankless coil to a seven-year-old steam boiler. Okay, so you think uh, it's like a, this boiler, it, it will be dead in a few years, anyway, 15 years, you think? It's if it's constantly, if you're constantly adding fresh oxygenated water, you're rapidly accelerating the wear and tear of the boiler. Oh, okay. Okay. If you're not constantly adding fresh water, ox fresh oxygenated water, uh -huh. you will get a life expectancy of, you know, of usually around 15, 25 years. Okay. All right. But I've seen them fail in a couple years and I've seen them last 40 years. Okay. Right. But the, a steam boiler's failure is adding too frequent fresh oxygenated water, which will cut a hole above the water line uh -huh. in on the heat exchanger, on the cast iron. So then, my question is: for that auto filter, is is working? I would, I would, I would not, I would disable the automatic feeder and only that's use and only add water manually as needed. So that's what I'm thinking. So can you help me just uh, bypass that one at least? Here, oh, you oh, go like this. Okay. You close that valve, and we yeah. open up that valve. Oh, okay. And right, now you add water manually. You want us to do that? Okay. Is this correct? Uh, this correct. is. Uh, this is off, right? That's off, correct. Okay, so then you put this... Uh, so now, we put that there. Okay. All right, and we close this. Okay. So now, anytime you need to add water, yeah. now the boiler is protected properly yeah. because the yeah. backflow preventer is after the, or the manual feed valve. So the manual feed valve is hot water coming in. This is closed. Oh, you turn this, this the, and oh, this is open. Okay. Yep. You turn this on, then I Correct. just need to use this one to fill. Okay. Correct. So that's good. Yep. So. See, easy peasy. Yeah, no, you don't need an ex uh, a, 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 you know you don't you don't you don't yeah. have an, a heat exchanger. So you don't need an expansion tank. Yeah. For this but one. but if if this is hot, and this is and this is warm, getting hot. So we have circulation. Like I said, there's a, listen. There's a reason why he's not hearing it. <laughs> Yeah, listen, and, and listen, yeah, you know, listen, I'm, I'm giving you just professional, friendly advice. Like, uh -huh. your best, your best bet is to separate the like separate one, right? the sixteen thousand, sorry, the seventeen thousand BTU of load uh -huh. that is connected to this boiler as a hydronic heating system, as a hydronic, sorry, as a hydronic heating zone, uh -huh. and put it on an appropriately sized boiler. And uh, we, I showed you the CGA two five gives you twenty six thousand BTUs. What's the CGA? What's the brand of it? Whale McLean. Oh, Whale well, McLean. It's a small little baby boiler. It'll fit in there perfectly, perfectly well. Mm -hmm. You already have the gas piping Future T up there, the three quarter inch. We'll do something with the venting. It's a small little boiler. The flue pipe is three inches on it. We'll have good, you know, we'll, we'll have an issue with venting and, and the chimney. You already have a chimney, a stainless steel liner in there. Yeah. So you'll be good. All right. And, uh, so now the boiler is not going to run at a hundred and... 105,000 BTU is gross. So this is the on, right? So then if the handle is perpendicular to, to, the, to the pipe, it is off. Okay. If it's parallel, it is on. So then, can you just show me how to uh, put, the what? <laughs> put the water in that zone? So I just want to double confirm my... I'm not, I, no, there's no, there's, no way of, there's no easy way of doing it. You're modifying the boil level. The boiler water. You you want to add water to the to the to the bo to the, the zone, uh -huh. but by doing that, you're you're modifying the water level of the boiler. Oh, so I, I, okay. I understand what you mean. Even even there's no heat exchanger, right? You don't. There's no separation with the zone and the boiler. Yes, you have check valves there, but it's circulating, right? Mm -hmm. So before you drain the boiler, right, close these valves so you don't so don't disturb this. And make sure you put the again. There's too much here. I could spend hours here talking about this for you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have you had a plumber who's unprofessional. He had no idea what he was doing. And he just took your money. Mm -hmm. And now here I am telling you what you need to do because you want me here. And there's no easy way of doing anything here. There's not. I would love to help you. You want to add. You want to put this and that on the on the bottom left and right hand side. I'll do it, but it's not going to work properly. And you'll have you'll continue to have problems okay. because you're going above the height of the boiler. Okay. And yes, eventually, you know, the people will say, "Oh, you have float checks; it'll work. It'll work until it doesn't." And when it does, it then I'll be like, "Well, listen, you need a heat exchanger." Like, well, how come you didn't tell me that before? I was like, "How come you don't want to spend six thousand dollars to do it?" Same thing. <laughs> you 
as, as a professional, right, the yeah. best advice I can give you, again, I've said this a few times already, mm -hmm. let's put a little baby boiler in the corner, separate the hydronic zone from the steam from the steam system, and you'll be very happy. If you don't want to, if you don't want to spend that money and spend a little bit less, we'll add a brace plate heat exchanger to the boiler with the pressure reducing valve, backflow prevention, relays, circulators, and, fair, and, right? and, 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 and you'll be replacing the, the boiler side circulator right. every few years. Oh, because yeah. you, okay. yeah, because you're still gonna because you, I know you're not gonna flush it out. Oh, okay. I know you're not gonna do that, right? <laughs> so you'll kill the circulator every couple of years. If you want me to put like a B and G one hundred, you'll spend another thousand dollars to put yeah. a B and G one hundred in. So now it's spending like say let's say almost five thousand dollars, then you're spending almost six thousand dollars. Okay. You might as well put in a regular boiler. Okay. Understand. So right? I, and trust me, I I'm not making any money on this. Yeah. I'd rather do service and repair all day long. Uh -huh. Right? Putting in the boiler, you know, a, a, a Whale McLean CGA, you know, two five boiler. This, it, 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 I make more money fixing things. I don't want to install something that you don't need, but you do need it. So what's the warranty on that? One? So I mean, the boiler is guaranteed. The, the cast iron boiler itself, yeah. the heat exchanger is guaranteed for life to the original owner. Okay. The parts on the system are guaranteed, but for one year by by Whale McLean. Okay. And we guarantee everything we do for for two years. Okay, for two years. And also one thing. Is this gas enough to support a two of this uh, boiler? We already run over that. You have you have a future team there. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I mean, yes. the, the outside one is okay or not? So yeah, yeah, you have you have plenty plenty of pipe. You, we have the right size pipe there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's the outside from the outside. Is uh, the I'm looking at the pipe. It's above your head over there. It's sufficient. Oh, this one. That's not the gas pipe. This? That's the wet return. The dry wet return. Uh, this one. That's the gas pipe. Yes. So you think it's good enough? So I'm not uh, thinking. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good enough. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Finish the job. Our sticker. See, you don't gotta take this one off for service. That's me, Mikey Pipes. If you're not calling Mikey Pipes, you're getting screwed. There you go. That's right.